Hi everybody, I am That Nursing Prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to figure out an APGAR score. So before we talk about how to figure it out, let's talk about, well, what is it? What do we use it for? So an APGAR score is something that we use to determine fetal well-being immediately after birth. So we do it at one minute of life and five minutes of life. And if they get a score of less than seven at that five minute mark, we will continue to do it. We'll do a 10 minute one and then every five minutes after that if they still can't get above a seven. So if you can see on the chart behind me, it's zero, one, or two, and there's five categories. So of course, the maximum score you can get is a 10. It's not normal to get a 10. Very rarely do babies get a 10, and that's totally fine. So if you have a baby or if you have a scenario where the baby is um, not getting a 10, that's fine, that's normal. The normal APGAR scores for normal healthy babies with no complications are eight at one minute of life and nine at five minutes of life. So not normal to get a 10, that's totally fine. But we do want them to get above a seven by at least five minutes of life. So why one minute and why a five minute? So the one minute is really determining how baby handled like delivery and the delivery process. And then the five minute is how are they adjusting to extra uterine life? So life outside of the womb, outside of mom. So that's why we do the one and that's why we do the five. A couple of other things I wanted to point out before we jump into the table is just because a baby has a low APGAR score initially or at birth, it's not going to determine their entire future. This doesn't mean that this baby is going to be sick or have disabilities or have problems for the rest of their life just because they had a low APGAR score at birth. I can tell you from my own personal experience, my oldest, her first APGAR score was one. She had a heart rate and that was it. Um, at one minute of life, and then by five minutes of life, she was nine, she was pink, she was breathing, she was crying, and everything was good. So sometimes they do take a little bit of an adjustment, especially in my situation because she had what's called a nuchal cord, so the cord around the neck, and she had a body cord where the cord was around her neck, but then also her body. So that was affecting her and the delivery process, so she didn't have the highest APGAR score initially. But a couple minutes later, everything worked out. It's fine. She's fine. She's healthy and normal. And just because you start off with a low APGAR score doesn't mean you're you know, doomed to be sick or anything like that. It happens. Another population we kind of expect to have lower APGAR scores are preterm babies. So the more preterm, usually the lower your APGAR score. And that is because things like uh, surfactant and muscle tone and all of that, those reflexes haven't really been developed yet, depending on how preterm you are, how old you are being born at, and you're less likely to have a higher APGAR score. And that's expected and we know that's gonna happen. Okay, so those are some things I wanted to talk about. Now let's actually jump into the table. So APGAR is an acronym, and actually it's named after the woman who invented this. She was an anesthesiologist. Her name was Virginia APGAR, so her last name was APGAR. And they decided to take her last name and make this kind of mnemonic. So A stands for appearance, which is the color of the baby at birth. Now, if you've never seen a delivery, if you've never seen somebody be born, it's normal for babies to come out looking kind of blue, okay, or cyanotic. Right? That's our word for blue. So that's actually very normal. But if you've never seen that before, it's kind of scary. Right? Um, so appearance, color. That's what we're looking for. If they're uh, pale or cyanotic, it's a zero. If they have something called acrocyanosis, um, it's a one. Acrocyanosis is when their extremities are blue, but their face and their body are normal color, are pink. This also is something that freaks the parents out too. They're like, oh my gosh, why are my baby's feet blue? That's very, very normal. It's caused by vasospasms and vasoconstrictions from their immature circulation. So totally normal, not a big deal. Most babies, the reason they don't get that 10 right away, they get a nine if they're um, you know, really good and healthy, it's probably because of color. It's probably because they are acrocyanotic. And that's fine and normal and not a big deal. And then for some reason, if they do get one of those tens, if they are a baby that's ready to go, um, they are pink all over, that's a two. Now I wanna take a pause when I say the word pink. 
because some of you are probably wondering, well, what about babies with deeper skin tones? They'll never be pink in color, right? How do we know? How do we know if they're cyanotic or not? You're gonna check their mucous membranes, you're gonna check the whites of their eyes, you can check their nails, and even the palms of their hand. So they will not necessarily look blue, but they might look a little gray, a little dusky, a little washed out, or a little pale. So that's how you're gonna know if a baby with a deeper skin tone is cyanotic or not. Our next category is pulse. So this one's pretty simple. A, do they have one? So if they don't, then it's a zero. And then if they do have one, is it greater than or less than 100? Remember, newborns, our pulse should be 110 to 160. So if it is, they have one, but it's less than 100 beats per minute, then they get a one. Or if it's higher than 100 beats per minute, they get a two. Grimace is G. Grimace, I put in little parentheses here, is also kind of like their reflex. So how does the baby respond to you? So when baby first comes out, what do we do? We put it on mom's chest and we dry it off vigorously, right? Um, part of that is for thermal regulation, right? But then also part of that is to see how are they going to respond to us? Back in the old, old days, right, you might have heard they used to, you know, spank babies at delivery. We absolutely do not do that anymore. Okay, that's completely unnecessary. We do not do that anymore. We dry them off and see how do they respond to us drying them off. So if there's no response, zero, they're flappy. And a flappy baby is like, like this, okay? That's a flappy baby. You don't want a flappy baby. You want your baby to fight you, right? You want it to be mad at you. You're drying it off, you're bothering them. You want it to cry and scream and wiggle around, okay? So a one is they respond minimally to that simulation. So you're drying them off and they kind of like wince a little, or they kind of move around a little. That's a minimal response. Two is a prompt response. So you start drying them off, moving them around, and they start wiggling around. Okay, they're responding to that stimulation. That's ideal, that's what we want. A is for activity. This is their tone. So babies have a normal flexed resting posture, which is like this, right? If you picture like the fetal position, right? The position they've been in for nine months, that's this. This is the flexed resting posture. And you have to have some ability to have some sort of muscle tone to hold that posture. So the more premature a baby, the less likely it's gonna have that muscle tone. It's just not strong enough yet. But if we're dealing with normal, healthy babies that are born at term, then it should have a flexed posture like this. So zero is it doesn't have any muscle tone, okay? One is it's flexed. And then two is it's active. Not only can it do this, but it can move its muscles around. It can move its arms, it can move its legs, okay? It has the strength and the tone to do that. And then our last category, R, is for respiration. So, is the baby breathing? Just like heart rate, kind of a simple one. Is the baby breathing, yes or no? If it's a no, it's a zero, absent. Yes, it's breathing, but how is it breathing? Is it breathing slow and irregularly? That's a one. Or is it crying vigorously? That's a two. We want babies to cry. And I know that sounds terrible that we want to make babies cry, um, but when babies first come out and we're drying them off and we're messing with them, we want them to react to that. We want them to wiggle away from us. We want them to not like it. We want them to cry. And a lot of times moms or dads will say, oh, shush, 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 I don't want the baby to cry. I don't want the baby to cry. I like a crying baby because remember, a crying baby is a breathing baby. Right? So it's better to have a crying baby than to not have a crying baby. Um, you want this baby to fight you. If this baby was flappy, like this, right? You go to put that IV in that baby and it doesn't struggle and it doesn't wince and it doesn't pull away from you, that is a sick baby, okay? That is a baby that is not well. Okay, so now that we've reviewed how to do an APGAR, Let's do some practice ones. And you will absolutely be tested on this in school, in ATI, and on the NCLEX. So it's good for you to know how to do them now. Let's do some practice ones together.